Welcome to QuickBooks Desktop Version 2017 for Beginners. The first screen shows us different options for setting up your QuickBooks company. You can do an express start and they will ask you some basic questions and get you started right away with a set chart of accounts. Or you could do a detailed start, meaning you have a little bit more control of that setup. And also you can create a company with uh, Excel files from a, another existing company to be brought in and created. And then you can also convert your data from Quicken or other accounting software such as uh, Peachtree, Sage, uh, anything that uses an Excel format. What I always like to do is the detail start. That's because I like to get all the information in once, touch it once, and I don't have to go back to it. So let's go through the first screen. This is entering your company information, and I'm just going to put uh, ABC Company, any uh, tax ID in there, uh, street address, and more information wins. Let me get this filled out. And towards the bottom, you have the option for your email address, which will show up on your forms and, of course, your website. You will hit the Next button, and it's taking you through the progress of your Easy Step interview. So what you want to do is get the closest industry that you can to your business. Uh, basically, if I'm looking, I'm a service business, I'm going to come on down and see if anything matches uh, through restaurants, retail. Um, you also have the wholesale and general product base and a general service base. These are the two that I mainly start people off with. And um, we're probably going to choose the product based only because um, I'm going to show you inventory today. We'll hit the next key. This asks what type of company organization. In this case, this is a corporation, a C Corp. You'll hit next. This is your fiscal year start. This means when do you file your taxes at the end of uh, your close is the end of December 31st. So your first physical year start would be January. And you would set up the password here um, for the administrator. This is the one that adds people, adds um, permissions. And then it will go ahead and create your company file. Once you've created your company, you will open up to what is called the home screen. In this, it shows all the activities for, such as vendors, customers, and employees. To the right is your banking activities and any company activities. I've been with QuickBooks and using this system for 25 years now, and they started off um, as uh, drop-down menus. So you'd go into a company, these would be the activities here, and the same with customers and vendors. And then they put a shortcut bar off to the left. So I can go into my company and I'm getting the same activity as if I went into my company here and on the home page. So there's three different ways you can get to things through this system. But there's no wrong or right way as long as it does uh, take you to the activity you need to go to. And in the first instance up at the top, file, this is where you would go and create uh, another company. You could do a new company. You do your backups through here. Uh, your utilities is also in here where you can import and export um, chart of accounts. Say you have multiple businesses using the same chart of accounts. This is where you'd want to go and set up that export, create a new company, and import that in. You can print various forms through here. And you can also, the main thing that I like is you can send a company file to your accountant or make a portable one that can be sent uh, through your email uh, to your accounting person as well. 
Okay, so now that we've actually gone over the different ways you can get to the activities, um, I want to go over the first thing, which is preferences. That's under your edit key. And at the very bottom, you'll select the preference. You'll notice there's a my preference and a company preference. The first one that opens up is general. So do you like to hit enter when you move between your fields on your keyboard? This gives you the ability to hit enter through a lot of these um, transactions instead of a lot of Mac users are used to tabs, so they might keep that enter off. Also, turn off any messages or warn when uh, deleting a transaction. My favorite to have for new clients are to automatically recall information. So if I put a utility bill in to PG&E, it automatically will recall that last transaction and it knew it went to utilities. So I always turn that on. I think it helps from uh, trying to figure out, well, what category should I put it in if you've already been using that? Once you've selected what you like in your general preferences, hit OK. The other part, I'm going to go into it one more time. I want to show you some of the, the options off to the left here. Now, if you are doing 1099s, you want to open this up, set it up, and it will ask you, do you file this 1099 form? You can also map your accounts. So if you have outside services, you'd map all those vendors you pay as outside service and it would automatically collect the data for the 1099 form. And you will have to set up uh, that vendor as a 1099 with a check and we'll go over that. All right, so the next thing I want to start with is vendors. We'll go right from the top here. Uh, here it's offering you a purchase order uh, in order to receive inventory and you can enter a bill and it will track all the transactions from the purchase order to receiving the inventory and actually receiving the bill. And you notice it gives you the nice little arrows to move along. Next thing, of course, you want to do is pay bills. Um, Entering bills basically is your overhead, entering insurance bills, things like that, that would not pertain to inventory unless you're a service business. Let's go through the easiest side of it though, just entering a bill. And the screen comes up here uh, to select a drop down key here for your vendor. If they're not set up, we can go ahead and set up, let's do ABC again. This will enter in a quick ad or a setup option. If I do the setup, that means I have the address for this um, vendor. This is where I will act, actually set those tax settings, tell it that he is eligible for the 1099, and I, that's how I'm able to track that. But if you just do a, a quick ad, it's going to put the name in there so you don't have any of the address or anything uh, yet. And also to the bottom, you created a bunch of vendors and you're not using them. You can make them inactive over here. And you would simply hit OK. Okay, so we're back to the bill here, and in this case, I'm going to select Bayshore Cal Oil Services. They've set them up, so it's a 2% uh, net 10 uh, to net 30 on this, and you'll put in the date, the reference number, and amount, and it should calculate per the terms when this would be due, and then in the expense, this is going to be utilities. If you are buying a product for a customer, you'll notice in the drop down here, I could apply this to a job for a customer. Not necessarily that I'm going to build them, but I'm going to create a report that shows um, my gross profit and my net profit after I've put all my expenses in for this certain customer. So I could put it 
to marks. I can also hit a class. So if I wanted to see um, different segments of my business, such as in this case, new construction, remodel, or overhead, I could also classify this transaction and be able to see that in a profit and loss uh, that can be run uh, together as one whole company or broken out by your classes. So save and close. That's another thing I'd probably change is the beep. So let me show you how that <laughs> changes here. You'll go back to general and then in here is beep when recording a transaction. I don't like that on so just to give you a little side note here how to turn that off. All right, so we've gone ahead and entered a bill. Now we're just going to go right over here to pay it. Also notice I could go to vendors and pay bills. This will open up, let me get the screen large, uh, to all your open bills and it's in alpha order. So if I select the Bayshore bill, it will give me the amount to pay over here. Say it's a large bill and I'm only paying half, I would adjust it right here. And all the information is set in here and also the bank account that it's going to be coming out of. I've got it set to print. I could also assign it a check number, say I'm doing the uh, recording this after the fact. And then I will pay selected bills. I can print the check right from here. I always suggest using a voucher check and uh, keeps track of it in here, gives you a stub to um, staple to your bill uh, for your records and then the uh, vendor gets the two top parts. I always choose voucher and if I do a print on that this will create the check and also be able to uh, record this immediately as a paid bill. Now that we've recorded our check Let's go over to our check register and take a view of that. We wrote it out of the 10100 account. And you should see the Bayshore Oil right here for $50. Now my escape key gets me out. So that's what I just hit to get back to the home screen. We're going to move on to customers. So in customers, we have all our bells and whistles on. We can do sales orders, estimates, create invoices, um, receive the payments, do statement charges. So this is a lot of information. When you go through your setup, you can determine if you will be using all this functionality that's here for uh, creating um, your finance charges uh, to the sales orders. I always try and put it all on there just so you can see the different options that you would have. And um, the one thing that uh, everyone wants to know is how do I create the invoice? Well, you can either create it straight from an estimate, and I'll show you in an estimate the option that it has on the screen. Let's get to a live one here. Notice at the top, this guy's done a lot of work on this estimate. There might be things he had to take out or not use. He could adjust here or right through this estimate, it will create an invoice. And it says you're about to create this invoice from this estimate. Do you still want to? Yes. So you create an invoice from the remaining amounts of the estimates. If you had a uh, charge someone already, then you would already have that off the estimate as a non-billable charge. You can also add a percentage to it. So there's a lot of meat inside of these invoices and estimates that you can use. And if I just hit the create, it will go ahead and it changes where it says estimate to an invoice. And in this invoice, it's already given it the next invoice number um, set up for this customer and the terms that we set for them. I still have the option here to make any changes that I want. 
I can email it to the customer. I can print it. I can add an attachment here. So the invoices can be very powerful. I have it set up so I can invoice a client. They can pay me directly with a um, credit card down here. It says your customer can't pay this invoice online, but uh, you can set it up to accept ATMs or credit cards. And uh, I think it's a, about a two-day turnaround on that. If, you, if they use an ATM, it's 50 cents. Uh, to have that done. If not, you're applicable to any merchant fees and their rates. So once we've created that estimate to an invoice, I can hit save and close. It will check my spelling and I'm going to say ignore. <laughs> and we'll get through um, the invoice. But it was mainly just to show you how you can take that estimate. You haven't wasted all your time typing all that information because you don't have to type it again. Now we'll go over to receive payments. I will select the customer, say Natialo had just paid me, and I can put in the payment amount. In this case, he only gave me $500. Um, I can select here how he paid me. In this case, it was a check, and I can put the check number in. Because it's the only invoice open, it, it knows to select this invoice and apply the 500 against it. Um, there are a lot of different ways that um, you can receive payments in this case. Like I said, you could have the credit card. Um, or they could give you cash, but you want to record this all through here. Hit save and close at the bottom. And now the last part of the arrow is saying record a deposit. So what this did is it took multiple payments from multiple customers in here, and I'm going to make one deposit. This matches when I go to do my bank reconciliation because it gives me the total and so this is going into my general checking account. It has selected all three of these. I'll be making my deposit slip out. I could print a deposit slip from here as well and hit save and close. Because I want to see that the money hit properly, I'm going to go into my checking account. I always go into it because this is telling me everything and what my balances are at a certain point in time such as as 12 15 2021 here's the 500 and here is the check that we wrote all right now a lot of times um, someone just comes in uh, the door and uh, you want to sell them something I call it a Z tape if you're using a cash register so you wouldn't have to go through and create an invoice, receive a payment here. You're going to create the sales receipt directly from what, like I say, the cash register. This alleviates those two um, options there because this sales receipt will record um, at the time um, uh, for my deposit into my bank account. Now let's just select, uh, we're going to do Robert. And I'm going to sell him a blueprint. And I can put the quantities in here, any description that I want. But I want him to pay me this $150. So he ends up giving me a check. I put the check number in. And I could print this right now for him to uh, take for a receipt. If he's not even here and just sent me a check, I can hit save and close. This will bring me back to the screen. Notice it's saying I've got one uh, deposit to be recorded. It wants to make sure I don't have anything else going in the bank. I'll hit OK. And it's now I'm going to deposit this as one deposit and save and close. So it kind of just eliminates creating that invoice and goes directly into the system. A lot of Z-Tape people will open it up, put their daily sales, be able to record any sales tax they took in, any discounts they had given. 
All right, now um, employees. A lot of you uh, will be doing 1099s or having your own employees. You'll notice there is a payroll center. A lot of things have to be set up in this, and that's why I want to do a separate seminar on uh, payroll. Uh, but the main gist of it is you have um, employees in your uh, payroll center that you will set up. I'll open up one real quick. Uh, this will give the main information uh, that it needs to produce a paycheck. So the name, address, payroll info. So if there's sal salary or hourly, if there's health insurance deductions, those all go through. If there's um, employment info that you want to keep in here, you can set that up uh, for your HR person or for it's you to make sure they put in the hire dates, leave of absence, any terminations. And then if you are, in this case, a construction company, you might assign your work comp code to this so it can produce um, that as well so lots of things in here but it is so easy to use once it's set up uh, right through the transactions you can pay your liabilities and then of course produce your payroll so if you're going to uh, start a payroll in here just to give you an idea of what the screen looks like um, you would go through, check the employees, and you might get one of those. <laughs> check the employees off you want to pay. Make sure it's the pay period, the check date, the checking account it's coming out of. And I would open up each of those, be able to log the hours in. This one's salary, so that one's pretty easy. But this one does have regular pay, and I could say 40. Oops. 40 hours in here and he had an overtime of three and um, there is a health insurance deduction save and close so this person is ready to be paid and I would just hit continue and create my paycheck now that's a fast and furious way of looking at payroll you do have to set it up uh, properly um, but it, it really is that easy once um, everything is set up and especially if you're doing electronic transfers, EFTs to the state and IRS, it's a one-click push and that's what I really like about the QuickBooks payroll. I'm going to go ahead and escape out because like I said, that's its own animal there. Uh, let's go over to company. Um, taking a look at your chart of accounts, that would have been set up through um, the Easy Step interview or you brought those in from a prior QuickBooks version. Uh, these like to show the account numbers. You don't necessarily have to have those uh, shown. You can find that in preferences. Uh, so you've got your checking, which um, each of those have their own registers that you can view. And then you'll notice the type. So these are bank accounts, uh, your fixed assets, which are your furniture and fixtures, land, construction, your liabilities, what you owe. Um, and then you come down to your income and uh, cost of goods along with your expenses. All these um, would be um, designed just for you, uh, for your type of industry, or this would be coming over from an existing uh, company. But that's where you can look at your chart of accounts, add or make any changes. Your items and services, these are products that you sell or services. Since this is a construction company, we're mainly looking at um, construction items through here. You can add an item, uh, you have the option here for new, and it will ask you, is this a service, inventory part, um, is this even a, a payment account? So you can do a discount that shows up as a line item and discount a customer, say, 10% through here. Um, again, this is its own animal that I need to do a seminar on uh, separately, but I wanted to give you just an overview of how that works. If you're using the basic system, you'll probably be using this one square here where you just record 
deposits, write checks, you can enter your credit card charges. These are like little shortcuts that you're not really creating bills or invoices. You're just putting in uh, your deposits of sales and writing your checks. And let's go through just writing a check. So it asks for your bank account and you select CalGas. It's knows that there's an open bill and you're saying no I don't want to pay this bill they're looking for another charge and the auto recall is auto recalling last time I pulled up Cal Gas it went to utilities um, you can assign it the check number uh, through here and then also if you are adding inventory you would add it through as an item such as you would have an appliance or um, brass hinges through here so you could add those through uh, your uh, check you could also add them through a bill and I'm not gonna save this um, this is where you view your check registers you can print checks and then entering your credit card charges each of these can be set up for the different credit cards that you have. Um, in this case, they're saying this is for the QuickBooks credit card. And um, I purchased over here at Diane's Auto Shop um, <clears throat> automobile uh, repairs and maintenance. And I charged $500 on that. And I could put this for the Ford. And it uh, I like to de uh, decipher between the different vehicles because uh, if you have a big business with a lot of one, I just put the uh, ending of the VIN or uh, license plate. Save and close. And this now will create a liability. Let's go into the last um, part of this, which is reports. There are Four basic reports I use, uh, company and financials, your profit and loss, uh, which is a snapshot in time of your income and expenses. So from 12-1 to 12-15, I want to see the income. In this case, they've got total income of 52 plus all my cost of goods to give me a bottom line of how much I've made this year. And it look looking good here. I got 10000 um, as of, uh, I guess, the 15-day period with all my exp expenses in it as well. The next report I like is company financials, oops, balance sheet standard. This shows all my assets and liabilities. So my cash is up in here, any inventory, any employee advances, all this can be recorded through that payroll as well on the employees. And then all my liabilities. Well, here's my QuickBooks credit card. I owe the company $594. Uh, oh, here's Diane's Auto for the 500. And this is where you would go ahead and pay that QuickBooks credit card because you have all the expenses in there. It also holds all your liabilities for your payroll, vehicles, and then of course your retained earnings for the year. Now the next two reports, one goes to your customers. Um, I want to see an open invoice. Anything, anybody that owes me money, I want to see and um, you can have an aging report which will age it by you know 30 60 90 days or this is just all open invoices by customer and then staying with that same theme I'm going to go to my vendors and it's unpaid bills so these are all the open unpaid bills I owe I'm going to hit escape to get out of here and bring you back to the home screen say you hit escape too many times and your home screen is gone you just go to company and put home page it will open back up this is kind of your home activity screen now there is a lot of information in here I am going to be doing some webinars and I do one-on-one -on -one webinars uh, with various companies and employees that need extra training 
but this should get you started and give you a small overview of how powerful this desktop system really is. Thank you again, and I will be seeing you in the next seminar.